Welcome to This Just In, the show bringing you the latest advancements in healthcare, strategy, innovation, and public policy. And now, for the fastest voice in healthcare, here's your host, Justin Barnes. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to This Just In. I'm your host, Justin Barnes. In these segments, I'll bring you the latest advancements in healthcare, strategy, innovation, and public policy. As always, we're broadcasting from the This Just In studios on the Business Radio X network, as well as the Healthcare Now radio network. For this episode, my 207th episode, I'm continuing my new format, highlighting the most recent headlines and research covering the latest healthcare trends, as well as strategies. I use this format inside of each of my think tank sessions, but I also want to share this with my broader audiences. This is also a peek inside the content that I'll be discussing at the Technology Association of Georgia's healthcare think tank in September, come up here shortly. Excitedly, I also have a very special guest today, Roberta Mullen, Station Manager of Healthcare Now Radio, as well as our editor of Answers Media Network. Welcome back to the show, Roberta. Justin, always love coming back. It's always great <laughs> to have you here. You, um, Well, first of all, you're a good friend, uh, a phenomenal friend, and, and technically the founder of this show. I think people who have heard our shows before um, mm -hmm. know that... Uh, you kind of pitched this to me in, in such a, a phenomenal way. And to be honest, I even got mm -hmm. a comment last week uh, when someone I was talking to somebody and they saw the radio show and they said, how'd you come up with that great name? And I'm like, I have, I cannot take pride <laughs> of authorship. This is all Roberta Mullen. She pitched it to me and she knew what she was doing. Um, this just in, you, you, you know, great play on words. Uh, and it's, it was just so relevant and perfect. So thank you for that, Roberta. Yeah. Well, you started our station and you're the oldest Voice. show on the network now. And yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm the oldest yeah. and fastest voice in healthcare. Yeah, maybe not. The, yeah, the show's the oldest. You are. You personally are not the oldest. I can, <laughs> I can attest to that. There you go. <laughs> cool. So I was excited that you, uh, you know, agreed to join the show today, and and you know, you have a really cool perspective. I call it your perch in the industry uh, in what you're seeing, because obviously you read a lot, but more importantly, you know, you have a lot of people come across all your networks and your media outlets. And so you just really see what's in the front tip and the spear of this industry and what we're talking about, how we're navigating it. Uh, and, and so I was excited that you would participate in the show today. So let's kind of jump off and, uh, and I would you know ask you a question. We can go bounce back and forth. I'll certainly talk about sure. some of the think tank content even I'm going to share next mm -hmm. week. But, um, but yeah, please, uh, please let us know, you know, what are you seeing in the industry from your perspective? Well, you know, our industry being health IT, lots of times gets buried under health care uh, overall. And right now we're in COVID. Everybody knows that. Yeah. And of course, treatments and vaccine for COVID right now are really sucking up the air when it comes to news and what's coming across. But on, on our side, there's a lot of interesting studies and reports that are coming through that I think numbers that actually make us look at health IT uh, on the side of COVID too. Mm -hmm. I just want to do a little disclaimer. Uh, I'm going to talk about three different reports that came out and I'm not getting paid for many of these companies, <laughs> but you're welcome for me. Yeah. You're welcome that I'm mentioning you. Exactly. Okay? So, <laughs> the first one that I thought was really interesting, uh, Kaufman Hall, everybody knows them. Mm -hmm. They're the management consulting people. They did recently a national hospital flash report of more than 800 hospitals. 800 hospitals, good, uh, good tick off our, what, 6,100 hospitals that we have. A lot of numbers, a lot of information on, on hospitals and their operations. Through July, their headline, their headline news to this report was hospitals operating margins down 96% through July. Wow. So you take from, yeah, you take, and they're talking about comparing from last year. Yeah. So 2019, 2020, through July, operation margins were down 96%. Nobody wants to see those numbers. No. I mean, that's what happened. That's what COVID did. Yeah. Now, they're saying now that since July, it's ticking up a little bit, but and that's because non-emergent services are back in. Yes. And another number that was quite obvious, volumes in emergency departments, hardest hit through July. But just full of full of numbers and a lot of good insight on what what ha what's happening to hospitals. It's uh, again, mm -hmm. it's a Kaufman Hall. It's free. It's not yeah. gated. You don't even have to put your your address or your email in. So go out and uh, check that one out. 
The next one I thought was kind of interesting in our industry. Everybody's talking about telehealth. Of course, that's obviously gotten the big, big boost. But mm -hmm. the other thing that's gotten the big boost was um, is e-prescribing. Hmm. Sure scripts just put hmm. a report out because people can't go into the doctor. People doctors can't write them scripts. They can't go to the pharmacy. So e-prescribing right now in August, Sure Script said that they now have one million prescribers, that would be the um, providers, that are now using e-prescribing. And that started at the beginning of the year at two hundred and fifty thousand. Wow. That's a big jump since since yes. January. So that is that's another part of our industry that got a huge huge bump and then of course the the king of the report people are class mm -hmm. and class just put out a research report on vendor performance in response to covid okay so that that was kind of interesting in the fact that the one of the questions that they asked and so remember that class asked when they do their surveys they do providers and hospital organizations kind of split them out when, when they do um, different information. But they asked them both, like, what solutions are, are your organizations looking for? What are they relying on to help them through COVID? Yeah. Of course, not everybody knows telehealth, of course, is the first one. But the second one was AI. In what regard? Yeah. In the regard that they're, what they're, they're asking, what are you looking for to help you through COVID? Oh, what, right, what, right. Are the, what are the solutions, right, that you're looking for, your organization? And first, all uh, uh, everybody way out front is telehealth. But yes. the second one was AIs. They, they're looking for those solutions because, again, we th nothing's changed. We have a lot of data that people just don't know what to do with at this point. They well, I'll say... Yeah, on that last mm -hmm. point, we are so, and I think Think Tank Five, um, Intel actually presented in that in that think tank, and one of their findings from the past uh, year was that care providers, because you wouldn't think of this, but specifically doctors, actually were actively exploring how to use AI for a lot of the the daily tasks and the more mundane tasks, and to let them use their expertise in better areas. And that is, was a little surprising because I would you'd think that doctors would be adverse to anybody messing with their care strategy because it's their care strategy. It's how they practice medicine in the last 20 years or 15 years or 30 years, but they actually wanted AI. And so I think that backs up what you just said there mm -hmm. is they were actively seeking, how can artificial intelligence help my practice, help me be a better doctor, how help me provide better care? So it was, uh, yeah. They're yeah. Yeah, they're starting to trust in it and they're yep. starting to see some outcomes and results that w that work with it. So they want, they're looking for, but they're looking for solutions. Yep. Don't, the, um, the other interesting numbers that came out of that report were the question was organization technology purchasing impact. Okay, mm -hmm. this would be asking the hospitals, asking the providers, what what's your budgets now? Um, and 30% have dramatically cut their cost of health IT spending. 30%. Wow. Not a good number. No. And then the other number that I thought was really shocking was 26% are not considering future healthcare investments right now. That could be tough. I mean, as you try, well, I, I don't doubt that. So let me, I want to touch on one other point. Then I want to attack that because that actually feeds into some of mm -hmm. what I'm seeing in the industry as well, for sure but I'm trying to navigate past it and, and help the market. But number one, go back to your stats of where 96% of their operating, operating margin is down. Well, I think you saw that as a MedPAC report from just a few days ago that talks about um, how the med right now, because of COVID in the pandemic, that the Medicare trust fund could be insolvent by uh, within, within four years. I mean, by, by 2025 or it might, yeah, I think 2025. So that's that's alarming because usually we're always mm -hmm. a decade or 15 years off from insolvency. Uh, and we, you know, right. something I've worked on for the past 20 years of how to, how to obviously keep uh, um, our Medicare trust fund uh, fully funded and um, solvent. And so when you're looking at insolvency here in, in four years from now, that's uh, that's scary uh, because of what's happened. And, and now you just kind of bring it up again from the operating margins down. And, and the, but these health systems are still needing money. I mean, they're still needing to pay out. You saw a lot of these. Uh, incentives and just life uh, life rafts or life preservers being sent out by the federal government trying to help right. care providers across the board. So, yeah, I've seen this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hospitals got two kind of two infusions in the in the last 
within the last year. One from Cures Act, they, some money came through there, and then of course the um, pandemic COVID um, aid. But it still didn't bring the numbers up to where it should be. It it, it shows that um, non-urgent care is the services that hospitals live on. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And the other part that I wanted to address, because you just, you brought it up well, is is how thirty. You know, they expect that to for spending to be down thirty percent or so. And I completely agree. And I see that. The only thing that I see, though, further is I watch the larger organizations. Now, I, obviously, they may be able to afford it. I, I understand that concept. But I see the larger organizations say 25 doc, 100 doc, 1,000 doc, 15,000 doctor organizations making a lot of these essential um, investments in virtual care, in fully integrated telehealth, remote patient monitoring, and virtual care platforms and to optimize mm-hmm. their, their consumer strategies, to optimize their patient engagement and patient empowerment. But, I'm all, but what I'm not seeing are those smaller practices. And those investments are critical to navigating the, the future of healthcare, at least successfully. I, I don't even see how they're going to stay alive if they're exactly. not. Exactly. 26% are not, uh, are not considering future healthcare investments. That's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a quarter a, of them. Yeah, that's the fast way to go out of business. I mean, unfortunately, and and I get the financial strains that are out there, but this is your livelihood. This is what you've invested the last 15, 20, 30 years of your life into. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and now you could make a real strategic um, mistake here on not looking for the right, the right op- solutions and opportunities for you to enlarge your patient base, not kind of hunker down and, and get let it get picked off and picked away because that's that's what I'm seeing. And I'm on the I'm tr- I'm that's I've done you know I've done numerous radio shows now mm-hmm. trying to plead to the industry say hey guys certainly these care providers these organizations please take this seriously please navigate consumerism and I'm gonna you know here in a moment I'll even cover you some of the mm-hmm. latest stats from the last week or two um, that I've been able to come up with through the think tank on what people are actually doing. But yeah, I focus a lot of my airtime. Just saying, hey, guys, you got to take this seriously. You got to look at how patients are making decisions now, where they're seeking trust in their health care, uh, how they're changing their buying patterns, uh, because you're, it's going to be the have and the have nots. And I just mm-hmm. it's for 20 percent, 25 percent of the market to uh, to go out of business or not successfully navigate how the market mm-hmm. is changing is devastating. Right. I've been working so hard at right. this for so long to help so many right. people. And it's tough. And that and that feeds into the last point of the the class um, research. Of course, you can't read a class review without I call it call it their praising and shaming. Yeah, so the yep. vendors who who are and are not stepping up, their reviews come from the surveys that yeah. from the providers and the hospitals. So they have you know who I'm not going to name any names. You can go out and get yep. the report. <laughs> right there they are. But those are what I thought were interesting. Like I said, treatment vaccines really sucking the air out right now, but um, in, in our, in our little thing, but I think these are astonishing numbers that really show and tell you some, maybe not so good future. Right. Well, and, and yeah, it's, it's, well, obviously there's, it's not good for some people who choose Mm -hmm. not to evolve because I mean, Mm -hmm. this adage evolve or die. So Mm -hmm. that's the Mm -hmm. truth. And, And so, you know, my world is growing exponentially. Because I am taking this all to heart, I am engaging okay. where the future of healthcare is going, and and so I'll cover some of that because again, this is where you know how healthcare has shifted. And again, I've done numerous radio shows, and we have the think tank coming up next week where I'll share a lot of this as well. But how important it is to ensure that you have telehealth uh, integrated into your care strategy, not just for episode, not just for oh, I can do telehealth just to get through this pandemic, and then I'm gonna go back to my normal, you know, seeing every patient in, in person, it's not about that anymore. You can't go back to that model. And, and I realize that you may not do the exact same amount of telehealth that you did in April or May or June, but you have to ensure that you have evolved your care strategy. So you have, you know, there are specific visits that you can do virtually. And that would make a lot of sense financially to pack in, you know, say, Six, to whatever, every specialty is different and everybody's care strategy is a little bit different for sure. But there are many specialties where you can fit in, you know, four to five to 10 virtual visits in an hour and you do all of those virtually. And then you have, you know, your set schedule. So say 10 to 12 every Tuesday and Thursday morning, you see a handful of virtual visits. They're all done virtually. And now again, those visits might be five minutes. Those visits could be 10 minutes. Those visits could be 15, could be 20. It, whatever is right for your care strategy and your specialty and what problems you're trying to solve for your patients. 
but you have blocks of time carved out just for virtual visits every week. And then you have regular in-person visits. And then I do want to touch, um, touch on how the market is shifting and patients are shifting and what they want to see in their care providers. Uh, and I'll touch on that here later on. But, um, but you got to make sure that you carve up your care strategy so you are integrating telehealth and, again, and remote patient monitoring and that you have a full remote care management strategy. And again, this all should be integrated on one single platform because you can't worry about integrating all these different products. You don't have the time and bandwidth. I don't care if you're a one doctor practice or a 10,000 doctor organization or 20,000 doctor organization or larger. You've got to have, you know, care providers and organizations that are looking for longitudinal records that are fully integrated um, and that, have that, that can integrate the entire care strategy all the way from the EHR out to all that patient engagement, including the digital front door out to the telehealth, out to the remote patient monitoring, the remote care management and in the virtual care in general, all on a single platform. That's what care providers are demanding. That's what they're seeking today and they're purchasing today. And so, I, you know, I want to make sure everybody sees that because this is what, you know, a lot of our research and we get inside our think tanks and we ask these organizations. And again, we have organizations all sizes. We have one doctor groups all the way up to, I mean, however those what, in the country are. So, what, what are you telling them about the laxed HIPAA requirements for telehealth? Telling them about the future of that? Well, for the most part, well, first of all, I don't believe it's going to stay laxed forever. We're in this emergency period. Um, and mm -hmm. so, some, some some smaller organizations certainly are taking it to heart, and it's great because it worked. They can do FaceTime or they can do whatever they mm -hmm. want to do. You know, it you know it may not be secure, and it's certainly not HIPAA compliant. But there's some re relaxations for you to go off and do it. That's fine and understandable. I don't recommend it because a, I think you're going to get more in a more complex care environment trying to provide patient you know the best care through that. Obviously, if you're in an emergency situation, it's perfectly fine in this current environment, but most of the organizations, even some of the larger ones, I mean, the most that I dealt with, 80% of that I dealt with, 90%, all just went to a HIPAA compliant telehealth, RPM, virtual care strategy. So they're just, they were already ready. They're already thinking this direction. And then when it hit, they moved in that direction very quickly. Uh, there are a couple of larger organizations that did decide to deploy um, Skype or other non-HIPAA compliant uh, modalities for a very short period of time, maybe six right. weeks, maybe four weeks, maybe two weeks. Just mm -hmm. to get, just to see those important patients, those visits that had to happen and they could not happen in person. So the advice that I gave to them was, hey, do what you have to do to survive as an organization, but don't never take your eye off the ball of where you need to go. So, and, and to protect yourself and your organization and your patients. Yeah, I think that needs to be pushed out a little bit more because I read the people that mm -hmm. are on their soapbox saying that it will never go back. They're going to keep it like this. I don't know if they have any HIPAA history in their right. in their tool in their toolbox, but right. I don't think I don't think it's going to stay this way forever. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think it <laughs> will. I, I just I can't imagine it will. I mean, could it for the uh -huh. next six months? Could it for the next year? For sure. Yeah. Um, but also, it has okay. one one major breach, one major issue, and then we know the world will fall. The sky will fall on that. <laughs> so we'll um, we'll see how it all goes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> What do you want to talk about it next? Well, yeah. Innovation? So, um, or, yeah. I mean, I think I would actually love to, love to ask you a question again. Again, you have so many cool okay. topics come across. So, you know, what are some of the most mm -hmm. interesting, you know, your specific radio shows? What are you seeing that uh, receiving the most interest and most interactions? Okay. Yeah. That was, um, I know you, you sent that to me for a question. So I did a little research. So I mm -hmm. thought that was an interesting um, yeah. question. Um, first disclaimer, I do own this radio station, so I do get paid from them. Right. Yep. Um, and I just wanted to give a little plug healthcare now radio now is getting 36,000 listeners a month and our online podcast and awesome. on demand shows are playing 27,000 a month now. So it's become a good network. Um, like we said, Justin's show yep. is one of the original shows and, uh, thank you for that. But I did some research over this for the summer and said like, okay, so what were the hot topics of the episodes that came up and mostly played? And um, I, in the end, I was not surprised here. The three, the three top ones were patient engagement, value-based care mm -hmm. and telehealth. Yep. Excellent. Are you surprised? Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> the things I've loved for many, many years. 
That's great. Right, right. Patient engagement. I mean, everybody's trying to figure this out. How, you know, the different generations, the whatever. How how do you get your whole population of patients and uh, satisfy them at this point? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'll, so I'll actually weave that into even some of the things. So we hosted a mini think tank a few weeks ago, just a handful of us came together, you know, not quote, quote unquote post COVID because we're still in COVID, but, um, but really, you know, how has the market shifted? How has patient purchasing changed and consumerism has it evolved? And, and to your point, it has. And so a couple of things I'll call out. Uh, is um, how organizations need to evolve um, even their their research because a lot of the like H caps are done in the rears and looking in a rearview mirror, and there's a there's a big recommendation from a lot of the thought leaders in the industry to understand patient marketing and, and how to engage consumerism and patient engagement in general is that you got to figure out how to do more real time um, surveying with your patients and uh, because you got to stay on top of those demands as these behaviors have shifted. For example, trust. Um, patients have a, right now a lot of fear, fear of COVID, fear of the, obviously the coronavirus and, and what it means to, to their personal health, fear of going into an environment uh, that may not be safe. And so promoting that you do have a safe environment, pro- promoting your safety protocols and procedures around the coronavirus and the pandemic uh, and, and rebuilding that trust. And if you, you know, aren't engaging in this in a real, uh, I would say, focused manner, you could confuse your patients or you can be, and you don't even realize that you may be losing your patients to another care provider who is beginning to build that trust, does have that engagement. And that's again, why you got to engage these technologies because somebody is your pay, that patient is going to seek care. They may not be seeking it back with you. They, even though they've gone to you for 20, you know, 15 years, five years, two years, 20 years, whatever, they may not come back to you because of trust. Trust is now risen way up to the top around the whole fear uh, of the pandemic and trust that you have a clean environment, that you can provide the right care, how they want to seek it, how they want to absorb it via virtual visits. They don't necessarily want to be there in person all the time. That's the big thing is, you know, we're not going back. You know, again, we may not have all the telehealth visits that we had in June, but you do need to offer telehealth visits. You need to offer virtual visits. You need to figure out how to integrate that into your care strategy. And patients are demanding that. So please do hear that. So. hmm yeah. yeah. And that trust just goes back to what we just talked about. HIPAA, when all this dust settles and yes. everything else, HIPAA is about trust. Yeah, it is. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Great, mm-hmm. great point. And also the reimbursement models. You've got to look at how you can thrive in this new world with telehealth, with remote patient monitoring. How can you engage your patients? These are their incentives at the state level. There's incentives with your local payers at the regional level and the federal level, of course, Medicare. So the remote patient monitoring is one of the biggest areas that we can really look to capitalize on um, and, uh, and really to, nav- to, to pivot your organization. It's all about pivoting. When you're running a business, you've got to pivot with the environment. If you don't, again, evolve or die. So, Right, right, right. How about some innovation? All this Debbie Downer stuff. <laughs> right. Well, I think, you know, it, very excitedly. I mean, I think it's important. And I know we've only got a, about a minute left here before we got to close the show. But I mean, I think very importantly in... in is to look at how are you using innovation? And again, this is very positive to me. How are you going to use innovation to navigate? So how are you integrating um, these virtual visits? How are you align, realigning your schedule? How are you making it easier for patients to engage your practice and manage that engagement successfully? Um, allow them to, to, again, seek care when and where they want to. Um, they're willing to pay for it. It certainly can be reimbursed in, in almost every care model at this point. So how are you evolving with that? And there's so much technology to support that and to really look for those products that are fully integrated, that you don't, shouldn't have a separate remote patient monitoring system from, from your telehealth, and then your remote care management should not be separate from that. It should all should be one single platform. Patients want that. They want a seamless experience. And again, it goes back to the experience. Um, and then also, they want to be treated as individuals. And so that's where a lot of the marketing and innovation is shifting, whereas patients want individual care. They want to build individual trust with the organization. Uh, and, uh, and technology can support that. They don't want to be mass marketed to with this generic message. And so again, this is all technology. So these are all real positives for technology. If you want to successfully navigate the future, but we are on the other side, yes, uh, on the other side of innovation, you, you're out there in the business side, the capital side, is there money? Are people, are people investing in it on that side? 
more than ever before. Now, obviously, yeah. it is it is tough to be a um, to be a uh, on the small angel investing side trying to gather money. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, and if you're a small cap, but yeah, if you're got if you've got a somewhat successful organization, there's so much money out there because people are pouring money into these innovators. Uh, to be honest, I know they are because I'm in the middle of all those conversations. So it's a phenomenal right. time to be raising capital if you you have a model that's somewhat proven. It doesn't mean fully proven, but somewhat proven. But at that, we How are about at the time. big mergers? I'm at time. Oh, <laughs> <Roberta>. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, time. oh no. <laughs> All right. But thank you, everybody. We will do another show on uh, on some of these mergers um, because they're in some ways they're yeah. crazy. We'll see if they pay off. But um, but anyhow, thank you, for everybody, for taking the time to join us today. Please join us weekdays at 2.30 Eastern, uh, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. And you can always track me at HIT Advisor and use the hashtag this just in radio so we can respond to your comments from the show. All my content's posted on Apple iTunes, SoundCloud, Our Heart Radio, Speaker, Google Play, and tune in. And thank you, everyone, and have a terrific week.